guys, welcome to the hangout with Donna Gets Crafty. Let's go make something. Hey everybody, today I am going to make a trash to treasure using, yes, Chinese food takeout containers. And I'm gonna turn this into a small version of a three-tiered galvanized metal looking tray. I did want a smaller tray for the first tier, so I used the lid to the smaller container and just cut the first little ring off around it and that gave me a perfect size. The paints I'm using are going to be some shades of gray and white and black, as well as metallic, and you do wanna have a metallic there, at least one, to give you a good galvanized look. I went ahead and separated out my paints into this egg carton, and I needed to give a base coat to my lid. So this Waverly chalk paint and ink worked best because it adhered the best, and when I went to use acrylic paint as a base coat, it peeled off when I did the layering, so that was very annoying. I would suggest a darker coat, seem to give it the best look, and I use this heat tool to go ahead and dry it. This heat tool has a very long cord, which I love, so I'll leave the link for that below if you'd like to take a look at that. Also, I like to keep plastic bags handy for my paintbrushes so they don't dry out in between using them. I'm just gonna go ahead and dab on this paint now. That's the key to get a good metallic look. Just go between colors and use different textured sponges, and paintbrushes, and that's gonna start to build this metallic look. It's really not hard. If you don't like it, you can just paint over it and try it again until you get the look you like. As the paint starts to dry, it really takes on that metallic look. It's very cool. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. You know, I love to have comments, so let me know if you have tried this type of painting and how it worked out for you. I did use the lid to the larger uh, container as a base for this project and now I'm going to give you fair warning because I'm about to do something a little crazy with my glue gun so if you follow my example be careful. I am using my glue gun to melt a hole into these metal containers and lids. Um, if I try to cut it with a scissor or even a knife they will crack and ask me how I know and I didn't want to run out of any more lids so that's what I did. The cool thing about these little containers is that they have that center mark so when I do go ahead and melt it it's really very even when I put the dowel through that you're gonna see it's gonna fit perfectly and um, give it some stability so at this point I guess that you're wondering um, am I winging it with this particular project and yes ma'am to quote my southern friends I don't say yes ma'am but yeah that's what I'm doing I'm winging it which is the way a lot of my crafts seem to go so now the um, rest of the tray, the other tray and the lid is gonna fit perfectly because the marks that were on the um, containers themselves make it fit perfect. So excited to see how this is coming out. I do need a little handle. So I'm gonna use a piece of dowel and a small piece of 18 gauge wire, which is easy to bend, but also is sturdy. I go ahead to make a, a snuggle, a, a snuggly, huh, to make a snug fit. I use my Dremel. Dremels are amazing tools. I'll leave a link below if you wanna take a closer look at that, but it's a teeny tiny drill. I would so love to have you join me on this crafty DIY journey. So don't forget to click subscribe as well as double click on the bell so that you can get notified every time I post a new video. Use a little needle nose plier to bend the wire in just to give it like a little hook. And now of course I'm going to beads because I'm as obsessed with bees as I beads as I am with jute. Pick. I went ahead and used a little bit of glue to secure it into place, then attach the handle to the top of this tray. I am like so in love with this project. Can I keep saying that? put a little bit of um, paint on the ends because I don't want a raw edge. Then I take a little bit of hot glue and go around the center of each of the trays because I do want to put a piece of jute um, cord uh, around that little area there. I don't know what that would call be called, the base where the, where the dowel is. Um, anyway, I did it on all three. So now I did place cord around all three, but for some reason my camera didn't pick that part up. This little farmhouse boho thing going on here is killing me. I love this little um, this little tray so much. Honestly, this craft has made it into the top five things that I've ever made. It's so cute. 
or is it because I went a little crazy and I made teeny tiny little things to go inside of this tray? So stick around. I hope to see how I did this. I'm going to go kind of quickly through it because I don't like to have my videos too long. So do you think that they're too long? Do you think that I talk too fast? Am I giving too much in one video? You let me know. I made this tiny little farm beads out of some paper mache beads that I made. I would not make paper mache beads again ever. It's just so much easier and just as nice to buy them made from Amazon, super cheap. But I made them and I just did the standard big small big small thread, made a typical little tassel to go on the bottom with some, you guessed it, jute cord because I love jute cord. Um, and I used a little end to tie it off together and then I gave it like that little head, oh, well first I cut it and then you know how you take the, the the end thread and you give it like a little it's almost like a little doll head well that's what I did there so there were my little farm beads I am in love with them moving on I went and got a piece of aluminum foil and I don't know what happened but underneath there is a pill bottle you can see it there it's a regular medicine bottle the aluminum foil was easy to fold and maneuver into a spout and then I took some um, what is that uh, poster board no um cardstock and I just cut a little strip and turned it into the handle again working with this foil worked really really nice uh, the glue gun the glue held it there in place really nice and it wasn't very hard I just folded it over it like I said it's malleable so it made a nice shape out comes the Waverly chalk paint in white. Yes, it is a hot commodity. I'm so glad to have some. It did take two coats. Oh my gosh, how cute is this coming out? I wanted to make it look a little bit weathered. So of course the Waverly wax in antique comes in very handy because even though you might be wiping it off, see I'm wiping it with my finger, it still leaves behind like a faded color to give it a good old look. A little Sharpie to go ahead and go over the edges. And oh my gosh, come on people, please leave me a comment and let me know. Am I the only one who thinks that these things are so stinking cute? Maybe that's why this is my favorite project, I don't know. Buffalo check, which is still in. I was so happy to see that in all the stores so far for fall and winter. Little bow. I got this bush of flowers for a quarter, started cutting off pieces, put those in there. So cute. Decided to make a little bouquet to put in there. Um, oh, the farmer's market calendar from the Dollar Tree. Have you been able to procure one? Because they're a hot commodity this year. I uh, used the little pictures from the back. Even though I lost the month of December, I cut these little pictures and put them with this um, buffalo check and red and white check that I printed up. I found just a, something on Google, measured out a small piece of foam board, which is probably one of my favorite things from the Dollar Tree to work with. I have about 15 crafts for fall coming up and some of them use this Dollar Tree foam board because it's incredible. A little glue, a little bending and folding, and eventually I did put a piece of red on the back of that because I didn't like the raw back. There's a little calendar piece. Oh my gosh, come on, look how cute. It's almost as cute as this teeny tiny, even smaller one that I made. All from those pictures on the back of the Farmer's Market Dollar Tree calendar. Put a little bit of jute around there to give it a 3D look. So I wanted to put a tiny um, uh, succulent in there. The one that I had was too heavy. So of course, what did I do? I went and got the dumpling sauce container and started gluing some jute around there. The plastic's a little thin, so if you do this, be careful. Um, it warped a little and you could feel the heat coming through, but nothing too bad. I decided to use a tip from Caitlin over at Crafts by Caitlin. She uses a flame to burn off the little hairs of the jute cord or jute rope that you're using, and that was kind of fun. So please be sure to check out her link below. And uh, a little moss from the Dollar Tree and a little succulent, and I didn't use any glue because I want to use that again because it is such a cute little container. And look how cute that came out. I'm very happy with that. Now I took the lid, this is one of those lid inserts to a ball jar and I gave it two coats of Waverly white paint, I don't know what happened to that, that footage got lost, took a dry brush, took the antique and just did a little dry brushing and as this develops, oh my gosh, it looks like a little wooden charger, it's so cute. Please let me know what you think if I'm crazy for thinking, look, how adorable. I went online, I printed up a little picture where I thought the circle was going to fit nicely into that. And so now it looks like a tiny little farmhouse style 
um, sign and look how cute. Of course, now out comes some more buffalo check that's going to make a little bow. I'm having so much fun with this. Can you tell? Making little bows is so fun. You just tie it like a regular bow, clip off the edges and put a little hot glue. And now I have a teeny tiny farmhouse inspired home decor charger to sit with my little collection. And here they all are. My signs, the flower, I mean the, uh, the greenery, succulent, all put together. How cute are those little trinkets? I don't know what else to call them. Um, they'd be made perfect with some lights that I picked up from Target for 90% off. Came with this weird mesh. I cut the mesh off and now I have three sets of really long fairy lights. It's going to look so lovely. I mean, really, it, this sitting in my living room makes me so happy. It makes me smile every time I see it. If you liked what you saw, if you have any ideas or suggestions for me, please feel free to leave me some comments. I love having comments. I love creating stuff. So let me know what you think. I hope you all have an incredible day. I hope you get to create. I hope you're safe. And I will catch you in the next video.